Hey, 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 Stan Steve, please like and subscribe. Please click on the Deck Heroes icon. Click on subscribe. 100% free. Brackets. Blood in, blood out. Um, okay, so this is like a bit of background to my betting challenge. Sometimes I just do this for fun. Just for fun. I'm not saying anybody to do it. I'm not even saying anybody to do it. In fact, probably should not do it. Oh gosh, I'd have so much more money over my lifetime if I didn't do any of this. But I think I've got to the stage now with certain limits in place just to double down guarantee that you know what I mean it is just for fun and it is just for a month just for fun speculating about who is going to win and having a little dabble um anyway from all that to this there's a few core things I recommend number one is if you are going to do it I don't do it just do for fun if you're going to do it if you are then go on bet fair because you get the best prices and it's easy to get in it's easy to get out um, I don't like going on football because it's win, lose or draw. So there's three, there's only one of those outcomes which is going to result in a win. You know what I mean? So that's what I steer against. But, you know, as I say, probably better not to touch it at all. Or if you do, put limits in or just make sure it's just for fun. All that said, right, I like to do it for fun from time to time. And I only spend money that I can afford to spend. And obviously, I'm not guaranteeing anything. Anyway, all that said, uh, I always go on this site here, OLBG. And the whole concept, it, they give betting tips, basically. I say they, it's kind of like a community of gamblers, basically, who give tips. And I usually just scan down this list, and there's going to be certain things that I agree with, and there's certain things I won't, and certain things I think I'll... I might have a little dabble and there's other things I won't again. So I never do horse racing, that's just me. It's like, how many horses in a race? Many, and we don't know, and I don't know enough about horses. It's all about form and turf and health, things we just don't know. There's too many unknowns. Don't like it, I never touched it, never will. But cricket, I know quite a lot about and uh, I do very well. You'll notice the Birmingham Bears, 18 of the 22 tips for Birmingham okay they appear to be playing at home they're the first team listed I usually click on click on the on, on the matchup I just scan through is there something here something valid you know six out of four historic records are not really bothered about are more about bothered about recent form and player availability and again whether people are playing at home if they're playing at home they've got the crowd behind them and they're familiar with the surface and they know more about what the groundsmen are trying to do. Maybe they know exactly what the groundsman is going to try and do. You know what I mean? So that will influence the selection and their approach if they choose to bat first and that type of thing. And of course, even knowing everything, and even if you've got, even if you've got it perfect, fate may take the match in a different direction, which again is why we only do this for fun. But this is the background. Um, okay, so the best thing for this competition is to support Birmingham to win because they are consistent. Birmingham finished top of their group. I think they won 10 and lost four. Um, within the promotion group, the promotional element of their table. Um, and Gloucestershire finished at the bottom end, the exact opposite. I think in fourth place, basically. So they scraped in in terms of queer qualification. So um, that is why the form... And the weight and the odds are in favour in favour of Birmingham. Anyway, uh, Wolfgang is saying last match between the Bears and Gloucestershire was one month ago, and the Bears won by six wickets, <laughs> which is considerable. They are favourites of the day, and the bookies are right. And also for football clan, he's got an eighty three percent strike rate on cricket in the last thirty days, so he has been right heavily. Um, more than what would be average, average maybe 50-50, but he's in the 80 or 83rd percentile. Um, anyway, the North are yet to win any of these quarterfinals, but this should be a, a standout chance with Birmingham playing at home with a star lineup. There you go. Liam Parker. Birmingham Bears are in resurgent, resurgent form at the moment and have an enviable opening order. This should be decisive, let's hope so. Um, Birmingham have an explosive batting lineup with several quality all rounders. They have played host to Gloucestershire side who finished their group games with the patchy Sussexes. <laughs> their bowling could surge against this powerful batting team and use 
So, um, batting wise, Gloucestershire seem overly reliant on one player, aka Bancroft, Birmingham to win. As as good practice, it's always good to see what what the opposing sentiment is, aka what people are thinking in relation to Gloucestershire in this instance. After a shaky start, they finished well in their group with six wins and a draw. That isn't bad. From their last 10 games. So there may well have been a, some one or several players missing from Gloucestershire who are now back in contention and they can maybe tip the odds. Who knows? Let's have a quick look. I always go to this site here called C-Rex, which for me is the best cricketing site. And that just... Well, in the middle, it says Edgebaston. That confirms that it is a home game for Birmingham, a.k.a. Warwickshire. When we're talking about form, both of them have got three out of five wins. Yeah, indeed. Gloucestershire got a few wins. We could go with deep, deep and say, well, Middlesex there. And the second game is Glamorgan. Where are they in the table? Middlesex and Glamorgan. Let's have a quick look. Um, I can't do anything about this ad, it's with the app. Middlesex and Glamorgan. Oh, in the south. Yeah, of course. Uh, Middlesex, bottom of the table. Glamorgan, not a great record. So maybe the wins that Gloucestershire uh, picked up, of course, they, it was because they were playing the weaker teams in the group. Who knows? Either way, <laughs> I'm keep, uh, this is the kind of things I look at, and I wanted to show you process... So that if you did do a dabble, then you are at least at the same pace as myself. And you may come up with a different outcome, but at least you know, let's say, the rationale that went into it. And if you know a bit about cricket, maybe you know a little bit more, maybe you know a little bit less than me. You can look at the lineups in terms of batting and bowling and the all-rounders. That's AR, all-rounder. Make up your mind about what you want to get behind. Um... Say for the Gloucestershire all rounders, I'm not going to pretend I know every single player. Yeah. Bell Webster. Look at this form there. Not really a lot. Not really a lot. Jack Taylor. A 139. See, anybody on their day can do something amazing. Um, but if you get him early. You know what I mean? You can limit that down. Maybe he's an aggressive player and sometimes you get him early. And there's other players. So that's my process that I look at. Then also, I'd, I'd look at the bowling. I like Marshall de Lang. Definitely like him. Oof, 285. That was awful. <laughs> that was awful. But, you know, everybody has a bad day. That must have been a bad day for him. And there's other players as well. Um, I'd like Hassan Ali. Definitely. I do like him. Uh, Richard Gleeson. Yeah, you can look at his stats there as well. I do like him. I say it's a great app. Long story short, I'm going to go in on Warwickshire. But I did want to give you a little bit of background. I don't just kind of give you these recommendations out of the blue. <laughs> well, try not to. So that's one. Um, what's just the other one? Hot tips. The other one I'm thinking about... Ooh, I do like a bit of darts. Um, but that's not what I'm here to talk about. I do like Yannick Sinner. I think he's in a comfortably beat Jack Draper. And I think this is a semi-final match in the US Open tennis. I think he's in a beat all comers. And I think he's already beaten players miles better than our man who's British, Jack Draper. There's no shame in that to get beaten by a better player. On his day, of course, anybody can be anybody. Well, most people can beat most people, but... um. I don't know if Jack's got what it takes to beat Senna. Probably going to win. Senna's probably going to win in three sets. Three sets to zero. And that's no shame if that's how it does turn out. I do strongly think it's going to be Yannick Senna. That price, 1.17. It's not great. I think that price was a lot higher. Um, and I can check that in Betfair if I was really keen. But um, I'm not saying I'm going to be on Senna. Not at that price. But I do think he's going to win. If Jack could somehow get to a tie break and edge it so that price gets larger, um, then I might go on Sinner, especially because uh, Grand Slam tennis, 
which this is US Open to Grand Slam. It's a five setter. So I say if somehow Jack could get one set or one set all and the price got to something decent, then um, then I'd be interested to say, now listen, I think Yannick's going to step up and um, just take this thing home. That, that, so basically, I want a better price. <laughs> yeah, of course, Australia going to beat or should beat, strongly beat Scotland. Absolutely. I think they won in like about 10 overs, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less out of the 20 against Scotland just a few days ago. And um, it's probably going to be something very similar. And they've got some very, Australia have got some extremely special players. If you're thinking about the, the applause in the background, it's not because of my comments. I'm watching <laughs> a snooker match in Saudi Arabia with a half million price tag. And um, I'm expecting Judd Trump to win the whole thing. He's just looking very, very, very focused and um, professional. Ultra, they're all ultra professional because of the money, and they are anyway, but especially because of the money. And um, yeah, my tip for that is Judd Trump. Um, I say I do like a bit of darts, but I haven't been following it recently. Mark Williams is a hot and cold kind of man, so I don't know enough about it to recommend him for this. But from the weight of tips, 9 out of 12, other people do think it's going to be Mark. But again, I'm going to let that one go. Because I don't know enough about him recently, as I said. Um, that might be it. That might well be it. Ooh. NFL season, that's starting. Um, oh, that's great news. Not not for me in terms of sleep, because I'm going to be really tired. Okay. Okay, yeah. Um, I haven't done enough research for, for well since the end of last season on American football. Um, oh, my gosh. I'm excited to watch those games. I do like the tactics and the te technical aspects of most sports, but uh, especially that sport as well. So those are my tips. I hope you found that useful. Um, please like. I say, I don't know. There's one other thing I did want to show. Let's do it a different way. Okay, I like this Tennis Live app. So I'm going to quickly show you something about my process for tennis. I watch a lot of tennis. So that is the core of my process. <laughs> I don't know what this is meant to be, 1.63. It's not betting odds, that's for sure. Yeah, the betting odds is 1.16 for Sin. That's uh, Yannick Sinner. Anyway, I like to go to this. Uh, yeah, I guess fair enough. There's a, a win predictor for what it's worth. I do also think it's going to be a 3-0 win to Sinner. Uh, I usually click on form. And also, if you look at the very top, it says ATP. That's basically the men's tennis ranking. Yannick is number one. Jack Draper's miles away. At 25, even if he was 12, ranked 12, then it'll be <clears throat> too far for a number one player to lose to. It's not to say it's impossible, but it's one of those should not happen. <clears throat> Somebody in the top five might have a chance against number one, but number 25, no chance. Should be no chance. Um, yeah, and it beat amazing Medvedev, who has had recent form problems himself, but thrashed him essentially Tommy Paul I actually watched that um, I say anything that goes to a tie break can go either way but I think he was just the better player uh, I think Tommy Paul had did have some openings to like Nick a couple of sets didn't take it and I think he broke his heart long story short though Yannick is just solid 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 beating everybody no shame losing to so beating Zverev in a very close match um, beat Rob Lev, Rob Allega. all good. Quick look at Jack Draper. Another thing for Jack Draper is, I'm not sure he's 100% fit. You know what I mean? Every so often he just feels his leg recently. So I think he may well be playing through pain, um, possibly. And you just don't want that, <laughs> especially when you're the underdog. Um, he did have a very good win against Alex de Menor. Alex de Menor! Also playing with injury, I was watching the um, pre-match coverage with um, Tim Henman. Apparently, and this is where you got a lot of inf extra information, Alex Dimonor only trained for like 25 minutes 
or practice, sorry, practice for 25 minutes before the match. So he's clearly carrying an injury. Uh, this is his first tournament. Well, I'm talking about Alex de Menor. Just to give you some context of how good a win is that latest win in the court, court final. Alex de Menor basically is still recovering from injury from Wimbledon, which was a couple of months ago. And Jack Draper against Mashinak. I can't remember how Mashinak is rated in the world rankings. Just clicked on it. Um, I was hoping it was going to say, it doesn't say. Um, it's going to be more or less about the same as Jack. Botic Van Schup. He's, he's, not, he's not a top 10 player, from what I remember. Basically, he's got good wins against lower ranked players. He lost to Holgeroon, who's well seeded 15. I think it is that 15 there. Um, long story short, Yannick Sinner should win. And this is the kind of things I look at, as I said. Best of luck. Please like, subscribe, Daddy Steve, and I'm out.